live from St. Peter's Basilica for the celebration of Christmas Mass during the night, presided over by Pope Francis. From wherever you're joining us, on behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to welcome you. Many of you joining us, we know, through the various Vatican Media channels, perhaps the Vatican News web portal, our live events app, the Radio Vaticano app, the Vatican News English YouTube channel, or our Facebook Live feed. To all of you tuning in through Eurovision, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks USA, EWTN, Shalom TV India, Salt and Light Media, at Madarshan TV, and all the stations picking up the worldwide telecast, and to all of you joining us through radio. We know some of you are tuning in through Radio Maria the Philippines, Radio Maria Latvia, Relevant Radio, Sirius XM Radio, the Catholic Channel, Luminous Radio, and Radio Maria Papua New Guinea. And many more of you are tuning in through other local radio stations or diocesan stations picking up the broadcast, and to all of those who might be picking up the shortwave transmission and still more joining us through other internet sites and digital platforms throughout the world. Welcome to you all. My name is Sister Bernadette, and it's my privilege to provide the English texts and commentary today. And helping me in studio is Father Bonga Majola. Greetings and good evening to you all and thank you for being with us uh, this evening and welcome. And yes, this is Pope Francis' 10th Christmas as Pope. This time we do not have COVID, but the war in Ukraine that is weighing on us. We know Pope Francis has appealed often that this war come to an end to the point of tears before the image of the Immaculate Conception on the 8th of December. He has also, for COVID, we have a vaccine. But for those experiencing the war, there is no vaccine. So as we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace in time 2,000 years ago, we beg him today for the gift of peace in Ukraine. And this is the first time since 2019 that the Basilica is full to capacity to celebrate this solemnity. Today's liturgy will be celebrated in Italian and Latin with readings in Spanish and English. And it will open after the hymn with the reading from the Roman Martyrology, traditionally called the Calenda, or the Christmas Proclamation, in which we recall the fulfillment of time, the fulfillment of the time of expectation, the long-awaited Savior born in Bethlehem, as we celebrate this liturgy. The Kalenda also expresses both the cosmic and theological dimensions of the birth of Jesus, rooting it within the history of humanity on a specific day, in a specific year, in a specific place. And this is one of the aspects of the Christmas liturgy that was restored through the liturgical reform of Vatican II. We now prepare our hearts to celebrate the Christmas liturgy. Through this liturgy, we recall an event that took place more than 2,000 years ago. And through this liturgy, what happened that night touches and embraces us.
we now see the procession entering through the back of the basilica. Children from in dressed in various traditional costumes bearing flowers. The children coming from Italy, India, Congo, the Philippines, Mexico, San Salvador, and Korea. Here we see Pope Francis sitting in the presider's chair that has been set up here for him. And the children now reached the, the place where the still shrouded baby Jesus is, where the deacon bearing the book of the Gospels will place the book of the Gospels here on this small throne, the same one that was used to bear the book of the Gospels during the Second Vatican Council. We will now hear the Kalenda. Octavo Kalenda, Sianuari, Luna Seconda. The 
second day of the lunar month. Many centuries having passed from when God created the world and had made man in his own image. And many centuries after the flood had ended, and the Most High had displayed the rainbow, sign of covenant and peace. Twenty-one centuries after the birth of Abraham, our father in the faith, Thirteen centuries after the exodus of Israel from Egypt under the guidance of Moses. Approximately 1,000 years after the anointing of David as king of Israel. In the 65th week, according to the prophecy of Daniel, about the time of the 194th Olympiad, in the 752nd year of the foundation of Rome, in the 42nd year of the empire of Octavius Augustus, while peace reigned in the land, in the sixth age of the world, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world with his coming, nine months passing from the time of his conception, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Bethlehem of Judea, born of the Virgin Mary, made man. Nativitas Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Secundum Carne. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ in his human nature. And the bells ring out in exultation.
And the deacon now has removed the veil from baby Jesus as we, in this symbol, recreate once more for ourselves this day the remembrance of Jesus Christ as we heard in the Kalenda, eternal God, made man, born for us in Bethlehem. The bells tolling now in St. Peter's Basilica announcing our own jubilation. we pray with the choir the Lord said to me you are my son it is I who have begotten you this day Cardinal Giovanni Battista Rey now sensing the altar. He will be the celebrant at the altar today since Pope Francis is unable to stand for long periods of time. now sensing an image of Our Lady. All of heaven and earth is present here with us. Filho de los Espíritos Santo. Amén. La pache sea con voi. En con el tu Espíritu. La corte imperiera para conmemorar la nascita de Dios en la nuestra carne mortal. <coughs> Gathered in prayer to commemorate the birth of God in our mortal flesh, let us open our hearts to the splendor of His light that illumines everything, even the night of our sins. In this spirit, brothers and sisters, let us recognize that we are sinners and call upon the mercy of God. Confesso. Addio onnipotente, e a voi, fratelli e sorelle, che ho molto peccato in pensieri, parole, opere e omissioni, per mia colpa, mia colpa, mia grandissima colpa, e supplico la Beata Sempre Vergine Maria, 
gli angeli i santi e voi fratelli e sorelle di pregare per me il Signore Dio nostro Dio Onipotente abbia misericordia di noi perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna Amen
Dio che ha illuminato questa santissima notte con lo splendore di Cristo, nella luce del mondo. Concedi a noi che sulla terra contempliamo i Suoi misteri di partecipare alla Sua gloria nel cielo. E di Dio a vive regna con te. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries of His light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. Our first reading this evening from the book of the prophet Isaiah will be proclaimed in Spanish. Del libro de Isaías. El pueblo que caminaba en tinieblas vio una luz grande. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. And those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on them, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For a child is born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders, and this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end. For the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity, from this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our response this evening, today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord.
O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. With justice, he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed, and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race, and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. Verbum Domini
a deacon who will proclaim the gospel has received his blessing from the Holy Father as the choir chants the gospel antiphon. I bring you news of great joy. Today, a Savior has been born to us, Christ the Lord. Deacon now approaching the altar, and now with the Book of the Gospels in hand, the Gospel procession now makes its way to the ambo. We prepare our hearts to hear the proclamation of the birth of Jesus Christ. And our gospel this evening taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. The deacon now senses the book of the Gospels with incense. In quei giorni, un decreto di Cesare Augusto ordinò che si facesse il censimento di tutta la terra. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. The census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem since he was of David's house and line in order to be registered together with Mary his betrothed who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside, close by there, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in sweating clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel there, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, 
praising God and singing. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to men who enjoy his favor. Deacon placing the book of the Gospels on the throne here above the image of baby Jesus. The Word made flesh came to live among us. This is the mystery we celebrate tonight. And now we will hear the homily prepared by Pope Francis. What does this night still have to say to our lives? 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, after so many Christmases spent amid decorations and gifts, after so much consumerism that has packaged the mystery we celebrate, there is a danger. We know many things about Christmas, but we forget its real meaning. So how do we rediscover the meaning of Christmas, and above all, where can we go to find it? The Gospel of Jesus' birth appears to have been written precisely for this purpose, to take us by the hand and lead us where God would have us go. So let's follow the Gospel. It starts with a situation not unlike our own. Everyone is bustling about, getting ready for an important event, the great census, which called for a lot of preparation. In that sense, the atmosphere was very much like our modern celebration of Christmas. Yet, the Gospel has little to do with that worldly scenario. It quickly shifts our gaze to something else, which it, cons which it considers more important. It's, it focuses on a small and apparently insignificant detail that it nonetheless mentions three times always in relation to the central figures in the narrative. First, Mary places Jesus in a manger. Then the angels tell the shepherds about a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And finally, the shepherds, who find the child lying in the manger. The manger. In order to rediscover the meaning of Christmas, we need to look there. And yet, why is the manger so important? Because it is the sign, and not by chance, of Christ's coming into the world. This is how he announces his coming. It is the way God is born in history, so that history itself can be reborn. So, what does the manger tell us through the Lord's birth? Through the manger, we're told at least three things, closeness, poverty, and concreteness. Closeness. The manger serves as a feeding trough to enable food to be consumed more quickly. In this way, it can symbolize one aspect of our humanity, 
our greed for consumption. For while animals feed in their stalls, men and women in our world in their hunger for wealth and power consume even their neighbors, even their brothers and sisters. How many wars? And in how many places even today are human dignity and freedom treated with contempt? As always, the principal victims of this human greed are the weak and the vulnerable. This Christmas, too, a world ravenous for money, power, and pleasure does not make room, as was the case for Jesus, for the little ones, for so many unborn, poor, and forgotten children. I think above all of the children devoured by war, poverty, and injustice. Yet those are the very places to which Jesus comes, a child in the manger of rejection and refusal. In him, the child of Bethlehem, every child is present. And we ourselves are invited to view life, politics, and history through the eyes of children. In the manger of rejection and discomfort, Jesus makes himself present. He comes there because that's where the problem of humanity is. The indifference produced by the greedy rush to possess and consume, there, in that manger, Christ is born, and there we discover his closeness to us. He comes there to a feeding trough to become our food. God is no father who devours his children, but is the father who in Jesus makes us his children and feeds us with his tenderness. He comes to touch our hearts and to tell us that love alone is the power that changes the course of history. He does not remain distant and mighty, but draws near to us in humility. Leaving his throne in heaven, he lets himself be laid in a manger. Dear brother, dear sister, tonight God is drawing near to you because you are important to him. From the manger as food for your life, he tells you, if you feel consumed by events, if you are devoured by a sense of guilt and inadequacy, if you hunger for justice, I, your God, am with you. I know what you're experiencing, for I experienced it myself in that manger. I know your weaknesses, your failings, and your history. I was born to tell you that I am and always will be close to you. The Christmas manger, the first message of the divine child tells us that God is with us, he loves us, and he seeks us. So take heart, don't let yourself be overcome by fear, resignation, or discouragement. God was born in a manger so that you could be reborn in the very place where you thought you'd hit rock bottom. There's no evil, there's no sin from which Jesus does not want or can save you. Christmas means that God is close to us. May our confidence be reborn. The manger of Bethlehem speaks to us not only of closeness, but also of poverty. Around the manger, there is very little. There's hay and straw, a few animals, but little else. People were warm in the inn, but not here in the coldness of the stable. Yet that is where Jesus was born. And the manger reminds us that he was surrounded by nothing but love. Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds, all poor people, united by affection and awe, not by wealth and great expectations. The poor poverty of the manger thus shows us where the true riches in life are to be found, not in money and power, but in relationships and persons. 
On the first person, the greatest wealth is Jesus himself. Yet, do we want to stand at his side? Do we draw close to him? Do we love his poverty? Or do we prefer to remain comfortably in our own interests and concerns? Above all, do we visit him where he is to be found, namely in the poor mangers of our world? For that is where he's present, and we are called to be a church that worships a Jesus who is poor, and that we serve Jesus in the poor. And as a saintly bishop once said, the church supports and blesses efforts to change the structures of injustice and sets down but one condition, that social, econo economic, and political change truly benefit the poor. And the Pope is quoting uh, Oscar Romero. Certainly, it's not easy to leave the comfortable wealth of worldliness to embrace the stark beauty of the Grotto of Bethlehem. But let's remember that it's not truly Christmas without the poor. Without the poor. We can celebrate Christmas, but not the birth of Jesus. Dear brothers, dear sisters, at Christmas, God is poor. May charity be reborn. And we now come to our last point. The, major, the manger speaks to us of concreteness. Indeed, a child lying in a manger presents us with a scene that is striking, even crude. It reminds us that God truly became flesh. As a result, all our theories, our fine thoughts, and our pious sentiments are no longer enough. Jesus was born poor, lived poor, and died poor. He did not so much talk about poverty as live it to the very end for our sake. From the manger to the cross, his love for us was always palpable, concrete. From birth to death, the carpenter's son embraced the roughness of the wood, the harshness of our existence. He did not love us only in words. He loved us with utter seriousness. Consequently, Jesus is not satisfied with appearances. He who took on our flesh wants more than simply good intentions. He who was born in the manger demands a concrete faith made up of adoration and charity, not empty words and superficiality. He who laid naked in the manger and would hang naked on the cross asks us for truth. He asks us to go to the bare reality of things and to lay at the feet of the manger all our excuses, our justifications, and our hypocrisies. Tenderly wrapped in swaddling clothes by Mary, he wants us to be clothed in love. God does not want appearances but concreteness. May we not let this Christmas pass by without doing something good. Since it is his celebration, his birthday, let us give him the gifts he finds pleasing. At Christmas, God is concrete. In his name, let us help a little hope to be reborn anew in those who feel hopeless. Guardiamo a te adagiato nella mangiatoia. Ti vediamo così vicino, vicino a noi per sempre. Grazie, Signore. Ti vediamo povero a insegnarci che la vera ricchezza non sta nelle cose, ma nelle persone, soprattutto nei poveri. Scusaci se non ti abbiamo riconosciuto e servito in loro. Ti vediamo concreto perché concreto è il tuo amore per noi. Gesù, aiutaci a dare carne e vita alla nostra fede. Amen.
And our Holy Father concluded, Jesus, we behold you lying in the manger. We see you as close ever at our side. Thank you, Lord. We see you as poor in order to teach us that true wealth does not reside in things but in persons, and above all in the poor. Forgive us if we have failed to acknowledge and serve you in them. We see you as concrete. Your love for us is palpable. Jesus, help us to give flesh and life to our faith. Amen. For those of you joining us on television, we now see the crib prepared in St. Peter's Square along with the beautiful tree the majestic 30, 30 meter white fir tree and the hand carved nativity which comes from a different place every year this year from Fruley helping us as we see also here helping us try to draw near to this child in the manger who draws near to us We can also do that as we hear the babies crying among the 7,000 people who are present here in the Basilica. And we prepare ourselves now to profess the creed with all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world.
Dear brothers and sisters, inspired by listening to the word which comes down from heaven to dwell in our hearts, let us ask with faith that God, through his Son, born of the Virgin, will teach us to reject worldly desires in order to live according to the gospel. Pray for God's holy church in Chinese. May the Father of light, who illumines the night of the world by the birth of his Son, grant that through works of charity the church will shine the lamp of faith before all people. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in French. May the Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sent his only begotten Son into the world, enable Pope Francis to serve the holy people entrusted to his pastoral care with apostolic love. We pray for civil authorities and economists in Arabic. May the Father of all who loves and gives peace grant to those with political, social, and economic responsibilities the courage to reject violence and to build friendship between peoples. We pray for those suffering in body or spirit in Portuguese. May the Father of all consolation, who never abandons the work of his hands, grant to those who suffer refreshment in his presence and comfort in fraternal solidarity. O 
oremus pro juvenum generatio. We pray for young people in Malayalam. May the Father of Life, who holds the future of the world in His hands, fill the hearts of the young with faith and hope, so that they will become architects of peace and guardians of the earth's goods. Hear, O Father, the prayers of your children in this holy night. You who through the faith of the Virgin Mary gave us your Son as our Savior. Grant that we will always safeguard the Christmas gift of peace through Christ our Lord. And we now move into the liturgy of the Eucharist. Our offertory hymn, Manum Nomen Domini. Great is the name of the Lord, Emmanuel, that was announced by Gabriel. Today he has appeared in Israel. The King is born of the Virgin Mary. Behold, the Virgin has given birth to God as the divine mercy willed. Rejoice! Christ is born today. The King is born of the Virgin Mary. Our gifts today being brought up by several families. now making their way with their gifts to the altar, beautifully decorated tonight with poinsettias and anthuriums and roses, white roses. Cardinal Ray now approaching the altar to offer these gifts of bread and wine.
Cardinal Ray now sensing the gifts on the altar soon to be transformed into the body and blood of Jesus, once born in a humble stable into a poor family. Simple shepherds were the first witnesses to this event. In this poverty, heaven's glory was made manifest. The church never tires of singing the glory of this night. The Virgin today brings into the world the eternal, and the earth offers a cave to the inaccessible. The angels and shepherds praise him, and the Magi advance with the star. For you are born for us, little child, God eternal. This is the mystery we are about to celebrate, offering once again the sacrifice of praise with Jesus, whose birth we remember tonight. We too, bearing the image of Jesus now being incensed, that we too might offer this sacrifice to the Father. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. Il Signore diceva dalle tue mani questo sacrificio, allora e gloria del suo nome, per il bene nostro e di tutta la sua santa Chiesa. Ti sia gradito, Padre, la nostra offerta in questa notte di luce. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind. So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
veramente santo sei tuo Padre, ed è giusto che ogni creatura ti lodi. Per mezzo del tuo figlio, il Signore. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an, inher an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people we have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this world, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We will now be invited to pray the Lord's Prayer. E formati al suo divino insegnamento, osiamo dire. Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali. Concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della tua... Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace e vi do la Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And the uh, celebrant at the altar, Cardinal Ray, exchanging peace with the Cardinal Secretary of State, Pietro Parolin, and the Vice Dean of the College of Cardinals, Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, who are concelebrating at the altar.
ecco l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Faithful now beginning to receive Holy Communion, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, as the choir chants our communion antiphon from Psalm 110. On the holy mountains, from the womb before the daybreak, I begot you.
been seeing beautiful images of the tree and the nativity display. Our Holy Father commenting on these said that these two signs continue to fascinate both young and old. The tree, he said, with its lights reminds us of Jesus who comes to illuminate our darkness, the darkness of our existence, which is often closed up in the shadow of sin and fear and pain. But it also reminds us that we too need roots like those trees. Because only those who have roots in good soil can stay firm and grow mature and resist the winds that shake them. And about the nativity scene, he says, they remind us how good it is for us to cherish moments of silence and prayer during our days, overcome by frenzy. Silence, he said, fosters contemplation of the child Jesus and helps us to become intimate with God, with the fragile simplicity of a tiny newborn, with the meekness of his being laid down, with the tender affection of the swaddling clothes that wrap him. Roots and Contemplation The tree teaches us about roots. The nativity scene invites us to contemplate. And now we prepare to continue our Mass with the prayer after communion. Preghiamo. Signore Dio nostro, che ci dona la grazia di celebrare nella gioia la nascita del Redentore, fa che giungiamo con la santità della vita a condividere la sua gloria. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with Him. We bow our heads for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you, make you share us with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, according to tradition, the image of baby Jesus will be brought in procession to the nativity scene set up here in the basilica. Right now, the choir is leading the congregation and singing the Marian antiphon Alma Redemptoris Mater. Loving Mother of the Redeemer, Gate of Heaven, Star of the Sea, assist your people who have fallen yet strive to rise again. 
to the wonderment of nature you bore your creator yet may remained a virgin after as before you who received Gabriel's joyful greeting have pity on us poor sinners And now we'll be serenaded with the famous hymn composed by St. Alphonsus Liguori to Scendi dalle Stelle. children have once again picked up their flowers again they represent the countries of Italy India Congo the Philippines Mexico San Salvador and Korea together they will accompany the image of baby Jesus to the nativity scene that's been set up in st. Peter's in one of the side chapels And as we accompany this image of Jesus, once again, let the words of Pope Francis accompany us. Let us rediscover through this image the amazement of smallness, the smallness of God who makes himself small, who is not born in the splendor of appearances, but in the poverty of a stable. And to meet him, one must reach him there, where he is. We must lower ourselves, we must make ourselves small. We must leave all vanity behind to reach where he is. Yes, God loves us so much that he shares our humanity and our lives. He never leaves us by ourselves. He is at our side in all circumstances in joy as in sorrow even in the worst moments he's there because he is the Emmanuel the God with us the light that illuminates darkness and the tender presence that accompanies us accompanies us on our journey our Holy Father in his wheelchair now being wheeled by his nurse now in front of the the image of the baby Jesus the deacon now lifting up the Jesus and giving him to our Holy Father kissing him first and he will bring the baby Jesus in procession and place him in the manger flanked by the children touching him and smiling at him we too accompany Jesus to the manger this solemnity we are celebrating today is the second major feast of the Christian liturgical year of course Easter being the first and most important and we commemorate the incarnation of Jesus come in the flesh which is actually one aspect of the paschal mystery that culminates in Easter Christmas begins on with the Vespers on the evening before the actual day of Christmas and also includes the Feast of the Holy Family, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, the Solemnity of Epiphany, 
and concludes with the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which is also the first week of Ordinary Time. Our Holy Father once again kissing the image of the child Jesus. We know Jesus receiving that kiss from heaven above. And the deacon now approaches and lays the child in the manger where he will be venerated by pilgrims throughout this Christmas season. Children now placing their flowers here at the, the little grotto that's been set up. Father now preparing the, the thurible with incense as once again we offer incense to our Lord and King symbolized here. And our voices rise with the choir, O oh, come, come, let us adore not just here, but in all of our actions, as our Holy Father told us in his homily. May all of our actions tell everybody whom we adore. The, all the children will have their photo taken with the... He, he's greeting all of the children who helped bear flowers. We see all these children representing different countries on earth. We can remind ourselves how long it took for God to prepare us for the coming of his son, as we heard in the Roman martyrology. And we've been reflecting on the immediate events that led up to his coming to earth in the liturgy of Advent, liturgies, especially through the figure of St. John the Baptist, who inaugurated the gospel already from his mother's womb, who was the first to welcome Christ. reminded that becoming a child in relation to God is the condition for entering the kingdom of heaven. And this is why we must humble ourselves, become little, as Pope Francis tells us, 
to become a child, to be born from above, to be born of God. Only when Christ is formed in us will the mystery of Christmas be fulfilled in each one of us. Christmas is the mystery of this marvelous exchange. The marvelous exchange when man's creator became a man, born of the Virgin. And in that exchange, we have been made sharers in the very divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. The children, along with Pope Francis, now processing out through the central aisle. And we'll be leaving you in a few moments as this live broadcast of the celebration of Christmas Mass during the night presided over by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica comes to an end. I'd like to remind you that we'll be back live tomorrow just before 12 noon Rome time from the Aula delle Benedizione above St. Peter's vestibule with Pope Francis Orbi et Orbi message and blessing. We invite you back for that on whatever channel you're finding us right now. We also invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts, where you'll find coverage of today's Christmas liturgy and other Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank all of the staff in studio, our technicians, Daniele Giorgi, our audio coordinator, Thaddeus Jones, who've made this broadcast possible. And also to all of you who have joined us through Eurovision, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks USA, EWTN, Shalom TV India, Salt and Light Media, at Madarshan TV, Worldwide Tele the Worldwide Telecast, Radio Maria Philippines, Radio Maria Latvia, Relevant Radio, Sirius XM Radio, The Catholic Channel, Luminous Radio, and Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea, and all the shortwave radio and other internet sites that you've been able to pick us up here. We now see what was the empty manger. We now see the image of the baby Jesus. Wishing all of you a very blessed and peaceful Christmas. I'm Sister Bernadette. And I am uh, Father Bonga Machola. May God continue to bless you and your families. And thank you for being with us tonight. We remain united in Christ, the newborn King, the King of Peace. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ.